universe at large. How you been? What's up? How you gonna be? Organized? Discordant? Chaotic? Reactive? Submissive? Oppressive? You know, go with the flow, that kind of thing. Well, however you're going to be, may it be better than you thought you could be. Because to me, as this year is revealing thus far, the 8675309 Earth round trip that you're on, well, it's, it's as much about your mental framework and your structure of possibility therein as anything else. At least the rewards that you're going to take away from this experience, that's where they sit. That's where they live. That's what they do. And to me, um, organizing that um, against the messaging of not worth it, well, that really is the biggest challenge of being alive in the United States of America here in the 21st century. Because, boy, are we being told over and over again that we are simply pieces of shit. And, well, some of that's kind of true. I mean, only in the ways that we're being disharm disharmonically encouraged by those who have ill intent around us most of us are busting our ass, doing the best we can, barely scraping by, realizing that if it gets worse, this could turn everything that you thought was there securely to be had upside down. And living in that existential dread, <clears throat> well, I've been wandering off on ancient civilization arcs for the last two recordings, three recordings, and after <clears throat> taking a break from Try to figure out that whole Messiah complex. Well, did I end it there? <clears throat> so, I don't know what's going on with me. My mental framework right now is what I would call all over the fucking place. Whereas I felt targeted for the last, basically, two years, uh, if not five, now I'm rudderless. I literally don't know what I'm supposed to do. I mean, other than fuck around with this podcast... Uh, <clears throat> these recordings, um, and in, <laughs> in as much as that is the case, uh, I gotta find some work. Like, this is ridiculous. I don't understand why Safeway, or the Albertsons Corporation, as they're now known, won't hire me to do overnight stocking. They keep sending me jobs that you have to be a college graduate to qualify for. It's like, no, I don't want to be your assistant manager. I have absolutely zero interest in that, but I would like to stock your shelves overnight. Apparently, you won't let me do that because I'm overeducated. Ugh. So, having burned most of the bridges with the employers around me immediately, I might have to widen my circle and go find somebody who will hire me face-to-face -face before I put my application in online. Uh, Yeah. I guess that might be the way at 54, if you want to get hired in this country, you do have to get your uh, name and face out there. So that I guess I will do. But lamenting this happening in January with nothing but a bicycle to get around town on, well, you can imagine that my lethargy is skyrocketing. In fact, I don't remember the last time I was this lazy. But... <clears throat> Having been rather lazy, uh, well, I've gotten to think a lot, think about a lot of shit, and I don't know that I covered very well how much karmic kickback I feel like I am, I was due from my uh, unfaithfulness in relationships. When I say I cheated on every girlfriend I ever had, that means out of the, say, 20 relationships that had presence enough to have been cheated on, I probably cheated on 15 of them. And it was just an opportunity to prove how <clears throat> incomplete 
and broken I was. Because what I thought the next person was going to do was compliment me in a way that made the whole make sense. But because I was an individual filled with self-loathing and uh, a concept of the world that was based on anarchy and chaos, well, I had no chance of finding this particular piece. And um, so in all of the relationships with whom I had some dynamic interactions with the opposite sex, but despite the plenty of opportunities I had to find somebody worthwhile to settle down with, uh, the storminess inside me never let anything get past the 20th month. And what's very strange is how I have seven relationships that end in the 20th month. That is some consistency from a motherfucker whose basic game was being consistent. Pause. And complimentarily driving the lack of um, of cooperative uh, co-pilot and finding that assignment filled or that role played. Um, well, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, focus on a career or dedicate myself to, uh, making money or these sort of things when I didn't believe in any of that. I didn't think a career was why I was here. I didn't think making money made sense in a world where money doesn't even exist. It's just a made up concept. But I mean, again, I understand the need for something that fluidity or fluidly, uh, why well, I can't talk worth a shit lately. What happened to my mouth? All right. But yeah, goods and services need an exchange medium in which to exist. Or do they? I don't know yet. It seems to me like the only planets on which money exists are the planets where misery exists. So I could be wrong, but not necessarily a solution of money going forward, am I? So when I talk derogatorily about money, I realize I'm alone on that, but I was never going to go out and make a lot of money. In fact, my whole goal is to make just exactly as much money as I need to live. So while that doesn't afford a whole lot of safety net, uh, it also demands of one not to be consumed by false pursuits, that money is often the undercurrent of such force or at least energy. So all of that said, that's how I live. That's what I do. That's how it works for me and only me and especially me because I'm not looking out for anybody but me and the greater humanity, which of course means individually, whenever I'm with thee, I can't wait to find out about how special your life is. What usually ends up happening is I found out how unspecial your life is, how limited you are, how you are your own self-loathing entity of manipulation and twist into something that you really aren't, but believe you have become. In other words, I see the defeat in everybody I meet these days, because the world is just filled with attack and unfair, disproportionate, Revenge against those who slight even minimally in this you are the problem, not the solution world we live in. It's, it's, it's all such bullshit too. <laughs> this world we live in. Uh, if it's not a simulation of variable factors of excessive humanity in action, like the tendency toward violence against thine own kind. Are we kidding? Oh my, what a planet to live on, where literally at any given moment you can suffer an untimely and grisly death at the hand of another of your kind. Well, at least here in the United States of America, where we got all the guns. Because that makes it the most fun. I think I'm done, hon.
Now, where's my bun? Pause. Unpause. Okay. I've clearly waked and baked a bit today. For that, uh, I have not much to say. And no, we're not going to go rhyme and play. Uh, not today. That said, um, I'm left with an interesting follow-up question regarding my guardian angel. And that is, am I still in love with this person? And what I don't understand is if you think you fell in love with someone and having thought this for the very first time last uh, February, well, February and March, then what, uh, what are you supposed, I mean, how, <clears throat> how is that supposed to change? Like, I understand I've even been transgressed against by said, uh, uh, angel of guardian nature, but again, <clears throat> if my belief is that this is somebody who's an eternal uh, contact of mine, and that's exactly what it felt like when I saw this person for the first time, like I've known them forever, across everything. Well, if that's the case, then yes, they are playing the role of guardian angel, and they came down here for the karmic reset. They're playing the role that had to be played for me to leave the planet on my one sheet tender so that my karma is even. How else can I pay back an entire lifetime of miscreant behavior and cheating on women without having the woman of my dreams show up and show me no interest? That is the level of karmic reset that we're talking about here. So, with that in mind, the oddity is... My whole life I felt like I was waiting for someone with whom to partner up and not pair up, just to be clear here. In fact, I wasn't sure this wasn't going to be a man, but I've always dreamt and envisioned this person as female. So I'm expecting it to be a woman. And expecting it to be a woman who I'm not going to partner up with, but I'm going to, or not going to pair up with, but going to partner up with, like this... This had become something I didn't believe was even possible 10, 15 years ago, but now could fully see, having been through the experience I've been through with the guardian angel, how that would happen. Like, so much of life was taught to me in this one year of interaction with this person that I feel almost um, adolescent in my emotional texture here in romance up until now. And I think adolescent is maybe a little bit too old, maybe prepubescent. Uh, no, not prepubescent. That's like before you're going through puberty. No. Let's say your first year in puberty when you have your emotions drilling you toward uh, coupling up for the first time and you handle that poorly. That's about where I've been stuck. So what's that, 13 to 53, 54. So for 41 years, going on 42, my magic number, I have been awaiting this lesson. And here it came. So, how am I ever going to not be in love with this person who proved for the one time ever that there was a plateau above everything else I'd ever quote-unquote settled for? So, hang on, pause. Pause. <clears throat> and the uh, the reality that it's unrequited does what to the scenario overall? Unfortunately, nothing. <clears throat> like that part doesn't even matter. I mean, obviously, it matters in the reality that is three D Earth eight six seven five three zero nine and my interactions herein, but it doesn't matter as a harmonic soul convergence, it just has to be acknowledged as this condition that this time and space demands. <clears throat> so how else could this be playing out other than to gut check or forecheck or illegal uh, chop block me into 
um, a reflective state of emotional impact. Um, well, all this could just be horseshit. Like, this could be somebody who I chaotically ran into in the simulation as a point of, um, of, uh, non-influence. Uh, yeah, but not with the premonition dreams. Like, that, that makes the whole thing a little too tidy of a presentation to feel like, I mean, <laughs> when you take the premonition dream to its literalist offering, which was that there was no catastrophe on the horizon, there was no cataclysm coming, but there was this karmic reset coming, which if I had just let go of, as the premonition dream said to, there is nothing for you here, move along, then I'm in no, I am fluttering by as if I had no sense that this lesson was here to be learned. But because I couldn't help myself, because I forced myself to uh, play in this enclosed sandbox, well, the lesson was there to be had. Now, does that mean that going forward, that's all that's left for me? Are reinforced lessons of this type to be had? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And that's fine. I uh, I had already signed off from this game pre-encounter uh, with the Guardian Angel. So I'll sign off again, no problem. And this time I'll stay signed off. Having been warned off in this large a context, well, yeah, why would I want to play anymore? Uh, it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth what I can't control, which is my own, my own emotional outpouring that just goes flood level. And having been uh, apparently oh, only emotionally uh, advanced to the level of a 14-year-old, well, this 14-year-old's going to keep his thoughts and feelings to himself going forward because, for now, anything else is just too much vulnerability to be testing the waters for. That I have come to understand. Pause. Uh, pause. And, okay, uh, um, maybe that's why I figure once in love, always in love is an equation that I am too naive to see past. I know there's a lot of friction in the world that would say what I've been through is the kind of uh, slap to the face that makes one uh, not just want to uh, get away from the situation, but exact some level of retribution given the pain suffered therein. But if you were somewhat expecting to have that gut check come at you and then felt it with the intensity that it gave you a new sense of <clears throat> perspective in this time and space, well, I mean, that's all I really got. I'm not much more advanced than that. That's as far as it needs to go for me to figure it's uh, in its closure phase. And now I just take myself as the new evolved version of myself that's become and move forward. So, <clears throat> shall we move forward into one of these stupid lists that I need to knock out of this notebook? That sounds pretty okay by me. So, let's take this random page right here and be done with it. It's only half a page. That's the best part about it. There's nothing... Uh, damn it, I wish I could read my own writing. Sacred? No, I wouldn't have written sacred there. There's nothing... Scored? There's two R's in that word. What the fuck is that word? Scoured? That cannot be rehabilitated through vibrational resonance. There is nothing discordant, maybe. Discord? Uh, who knows? All right. There's nothing that cannot be rehabilitated through vibrational resonance. Okay. This is definitely going back to some of the... Um, the legends and myths of old that center around um, 
that center around healing um, in both Egypt and Peru. And I don't know if we are creatures of resonance frequency that when we are ill, we're not just being vibrationally discordant to our own sense of time and space. You know, that's a little Twilight Zone-y. Oh, oh, God. But why would two separate societies come up with the same quasi-mystical sense of science? It's like, why are there mummies on both sides of the ocean? Hell, aren't there mummies in Asia as well? I mean, mummies are everywhere. Mummies and pyramids. That shit's not normal. It's not. It's why we could, with some level of confidence, say there had to have been a civilization of global presence that now no longer has trace elements to be found other than their monoliths and possibly buried uh, trinkets in Mexico and South America. Anyhow, if um, we were to put a shovel down in Ethiopia too, that would help. But since we're unwilling to do this, well, we can keep claiming that all these civilizations came up with these same ideas simultaneously, and that's just where we stand. Yeah, that's how stupid it all is. But that's where we're at. Pause. All right, unpause. Now, <clears throat> since the true pain that uh, this reality can extend, the idea that someone of your own kind could decide to end your life, such as all the unnecessary suffering that is happening in the Middle East right now, that my country seems not to be able to take a moral stand against. Another reason that these lines on a map simply don't reflect the person that I am. But <clears throat> in spite of our inept leadership who's been bought off by a military complex so entrenched that all they can think is to create more dissension in this world so they can sell more weapons to more people to create more dissension in this world. Well, successful reinforced feedback loop that that is, it's the horror of what we're all experiencing on this planet and the reason that we're all so filled with dread in our subconscious psyche. Because we know any other frame of mind on this planet is one that'll get you killed. Pause. Unpause. So, why is that the tangent you went on when it came to this vibrational resonance? Fair question. Not sure. But, to be um, somewhat rehabilitative of my own image in the moment, well, I can tangent anywhere on anything, so I think your question had no basis. All right, the next line here is the disconnect between M and W is unassume is, uh, uh, oh my God, my handwriting is terrible. Display to my riot, right? The disconnect between M and W. First of all, what would M and W be? Monday and Wednesday? Is, uh, maybe this is just a page I can rip apart. The difference between, oh, men and women is unmassive display to my right is on massive display to my right. Oh, the difference between women from my youth to today is one of self congratulation. Hmm. Okay, that's a rather ominous statement and one that clearly is grounded in sexism. But, <clears throat> all right, this page was never worth it in the first place. Glad we could disregard that page and pretend that it's the part of my sanity that we just don't visit very often. Um, <clears throat> how about must commit to beneficial recollaboration, recalibration? So if we're going to reset society, how are we going to do so where we come up with one that's beneficial for all of us? I haven't worked on that, so I'll leave that question sitting there. But that's some, some consideration worth thinking about.
The Loops of Life. It have, if I'd have just gotten started on that, it would already be done. <clears throat> How much time do you waste thinking about or planning or researching or YouTube videoing or whatever shit in your life instead of just going out and doing shit in your life? Well, for me, it's a lot higher than I think I'd like to admit. And not necessarily... Um, hmm at the level that I consider it problematic. And that, I think, is the scariest shit. Because when I compare myself to other people and their usage of the internet, or um, their influence therein, well, I'm nowhere near as professional a player as those around me who are full-time committed to this medium. Nope. Not interested. Social media? I don't even participate. How can something be social when it's on a screen? That's the definition of antisocial. So, yes, I know this is an anachronistic point of view, and I get that you have to have been born when there was no internet to appreciate what a life without internet looks like. But having been born in that world, I do appreciate that. And I appreciate it to the point that I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to remain headed into this technological century, I'm going to remain with my humanity placed first. And if you expect me to stop that, well, perhaps we do need to have a conversation. Pause. Unpause. Okay, but what would we converse about? The wonder of the co-entanglement of particles? The double slit experiment and what it portents for reality as we see it and know it. Whether or not the moon truly is fake. How this planet we're on cannot be proven to be a planet and NASA won't take a picture of it, so what the fuck? How are we supposed to know that we're not on some giant turtle? Maybe. Maybe that's what we talk about. I mean, I'm sure you'd bring a list of concerns, too. Probably better than mine. At least better than that one about the turtle. Pause. Unpause. Uh, okay, but how did you get there? From, if I'd have just gotten started on that, I'd already be done. Right, 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 right. Um, well, yeah, envisioning something instead of just doing it, oftentimes will leave you with nothing done. If that is an unfamiliar feeling to you as an American, well then, what do you not even have the internet? Pause. Are you living life to win or living life not to lose? Huh. This feels like the kind of stuff you might have on a menu in some diner in the Midwest. You pull in and all of a sudden there's a bunch of thinking about life statements on the paper menu. Well, <clears throat> okay. Obviously, living life not to lose is not living life. And how do you choose to live life to win? Well, you have to determine inside you what a win is. It's different for everyone. For me, a win is seeing somebody in need get the help they need. That's a win. It's a win even when that happens vicariously. Which is, of course, dangerous. You can't be <clears throat> substituting vicarious wins for actual wins. That will lead you to a land of having gotten nowhere. And <clears throat> not being one who favors getting nowhere when I'm trying to get somewhere, well, <clears throat> that entrapment can become your whole phasing into life here. You can get really comfortable with your team on planet 8675309 Earth. You can feel like being a white, American, middle-class, tax-paying citizen is about as noble a pursuit as you can imagine undertaking <clears throat> without realizing that the nobility of that pursuit is being propped up by messaging that sits on a shifting 
tide of sands that if you look too carefully you'll see are disintegrating under your feet. And when that happens, when the reality check becomes inevitable, when, say, your government refuses to stand down in the face of widespread public opinion that they're overreaching, well, where does that drive you? What is that little bit of life challenge you to say looks like a win versus looks like playing not to lose. If we simply sit here thinking the best among us will get their shit together and start doing the right thing, well then to me that looks like we're playing not to lose.